Hey students, this video is mostly for the purpose of reference or maybe a little refresher um, on correlation and regression in Excel. You've seen me do this in class, but I wanted to create something that you could refer back to in case you were not in class or you forgot something uh, so that you would have, have it um, and you would have me walking through it. So I've taken some data. This is 25 data points, 25 data pairs on uh, my, my independent variable or my explanatory variable here is the oil price per barrel. And my dependent variable or my response variable is the gas price per gallon. Uh, and we would think that these would not just um, exist a correlation between the two, but also a causation. So it would be appropriate to look at these and make some predictions from them um, from the past, maybe to predict, predict the future price, um, price per gallon of gas. So. To start out, I want to see if there does exist a correlation, a linear correlation at all. We know that these are probably related in some way, but are they linearly related? And that's what our correlation coefficient is going to tell us. So to get that, in Excel, this is equal C-O-R-R-E-L, and we have a parentheses, and then you're going to select your first set of data, your independent uh, explanatory variable. So I just clicked and drug across all of those variables. And then comma, and click and drag over your response or your dependent variable. All these data points. Close those parentheses, hit enter, and there is your correlation coefficient. So 0.8867. That's a pretty good correlation. I think that we're safe to say that this is a strong linear correlation, a strong enough correlation to go ahead and examine the scatter plot, the line of best fit, uh, and maybe make predictions from it as well. So let's construct that scatter plot. To do that, you just need to highlight both sets of data, both variables. So just click and drag over the whole thing. And then under your Insert tab, click Scatter. And we're going to do the scatter with um, only the points. So there it is. It's a little small, clustered together. So um, I am going to, first of all, make it bigger. Just get some formatting here. I'm going to get rid of that, because there's only one series, so we don't need that key. Also, you'll notice that my data here is, is starting, um, this point is the smallest, and it is at 19.73, 1.38. And so I think I want to start my x-axis at not 0, but maybe 15. Um, so I'm going to click on this axis, right-click, Format Axis, and change my mini minimum to a fix and change it to what I want it to be. I want it to start at 15. So maybe your data um, has a big space there in the beginning, um, either right here or right here or both, and you can change where your axis starts so that it just focuses on that data a little bit better. So just a quick reminder, it was like this, just all clustered together, hard to see any correlation, and now it looks just a little bit better, a little bit more spread out, um, able to see it better. So that's why I did that, and I could probably um, also maybe start the um, y-axis at 1. But I don't, I don't really like that with starting at 1. If it was like 15, that would be different. But I don't really like starting at 1 because that could lead to a, a misleading graph. It's something that the reader of the graph might not catch on to right away and maybe think that gas prices are a lot lower than they are. So I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to label my graph. So here's it with the title and the 
um, X and Y axis labeled. We've got our crude oil price per barrel on the horizontal and our gas price per gallon on the vertical because that's how we graphed them, the um, explanatory and the response or the independent and dependent variables. Okay. Now I am going to explain this data further. I'm going to insert a regression line. To do that, you click on some data values, right click, and simply select add trend line. Now, the default on that, I'll show you, is just going to encapsulate the data. Uh, so it's not going to go any further back than the data goes or any um, more forward than the data goes. So here's our our you know our last point and here's our first point and that's as far as our trend line goes well we're not able to pr make any predictions beyond our data with a trend line that only goes that far and I, I also don't like the look of it I want it to uh, stretch beyond the data a little bit so I'm gonna format that trend line this is the same thing that comes up when you select that trend line so you can do it right here and I'm going to push that trend line um, forward, I'm going to go ahead and go five periods, so that's five units. Um, it's maximum, let's see, is at 25.82 right now, um, and I'm going to stretch that to um, five more data points, so 25, so around 30 is what I'm stretching it to. Okay, um, and then I am also going to move it backwards. So right now it's starting around 19. Let's just move it back two units uh, to 15. So I'll move it backward two periods. I also want to click this box to display the equation on the chart so that I have the equation for my data. All right, so there is the linear regression line, the least squares regression line. Um, so now it's, it's looking really good. Now we can use that regression line to make predictions um, on for data values that are not necessarily represented on our, um, our data values. So I took, what I decided to do is um, put this into Excel to make it a little bit easier to work with so that I can use some formulas. So I just typed in the slope of my line, so 0 0.0682. That's the value in front of your x. And the intercept of my line, so that's the value by itself right here. So make sure your signs are correct. So if you have a, a negative right here, make sure you're putting in a negative. If you have a minus sign right here, make sure you're putting a minus here. So this will be a positive 0 0.0603. Okay. And now I'm going to make predictions for when the oil price is at $21 a barrel, 25, 27, 30, and 35. None of these are represented in my data, so I don't have a value right at 21. I have, in, you know, really close to 21 at 20.93 and 21.12, but I'm using the least squares line to make a prediction when it's right at 21. Same with 25. I don't have a point that's exactly 25. I do have one that's close. So we can predict that, just looking at the data, we can predict that this price should be in between these, and we'll check and see if it is. So let me do those. So I'm just going to put this in as an equation so I can click and drag and not have to type it in every time. Uh, so the equation is the slope, and I'm going to put a dollar sign in there so that that cell freezes. So dollar sign in between in and four freezes it up and down. And then times my x value, which in this case is the oil price. Um, 21. I don't want to freeze that one. That's what I'm going to move up and down. And then I'm going to add the intercept. And I'm going to freeze that intercept cell so that when I click and drag, um, it doesn't move. It stays that 0 0.0603. Okay, there's my formula. It's my 
formula for my line um, in a Excel formula. And there it is. Um, so the prediction for oil price being at $21 per gallon is a gas price of $149 per gallon. And we can come over here and here's 20.93. Um, here's 21.12, so we're a little bit above this one, actually above this one as well, so this one was just a little bit lower, but we can see this at 1.53. We are between this one and this one with that, so um, I think that's a, a pretty good prediction, testing our line here, and then click and drag to get our next one, okay? So our prediction for $25 a barrel is one point um, a dollar and seventy uh, seven for the gas price per gallon. So let's look at twenty-five right here. Twenty-four point nine four is one point seven five, one point eight five. So we're just a little bit we're we're actually right in between those two values, right where twenty-five would land. So that's beautiful. Both of these were examples of um, interpolation because those were within our data values. Um, they were between our, within our data. So they were, you know, 21 is right here. So you can see it's within our data. And 25 is right here, so it's within our data. Now these are beyond our data, so we're going to look at the um, for the gas price for if our oil went up to twenty-seven dollars, um, thirty, and thirty-five. And thirty-five is not even on the graph, but we can still we can put it on the graph, and we can definitely find that. So I just did all three of these together. Twenty-seven, we've got a dollar ninety. Thirty, we get up to two eleven. 35, we get up to 245. So these are examples, once again, of extrapolation because they are beyond our data, predictions beyond where our data begins and ends. I could also do, um, you know, something below our data with maybe we're looking at if, if oil prices were to get down to $17 a barrel, well, what would the um, gas price be and there you see it's 121 so you could that's another example of um, extrapolation as well so that's included in that extrapolation there so before our data um, begins and then after our data all in um, all examples of interpolate extrapolation and then interpolation actually happens within the data predictions within the data all right, that's it. Hopefully that helped um, and created um, a way for you to make sure that you know how to um, do some correlation and regression calculations in Excel. All right, bye.